Hello everyone, my name is Christian, welcome to my hobby blog. Uh, first and foremost, I have COVID. <laughs> uh, it absolutely sucks, that's why I was feeling, or at least didn't sound good yesterday when I was doing uh, whatever video I did yesterday. Uh, I guess the Christopher Lee video, but um, today I'm excited to finally go into uh, some more Vinegar Syndrome reviews. Uh, I have a big announcement for in a couple of weeks, I guess, when the subscriber week happens. Um, a lot of y'all would be quite surprised at it, but for now, let's talk about a movie that blew me away. Um, this is probably my favorite so far of the package, um, which isn't saying much because this is the second one, but this is from the November 2022 Vinegar Syndrome subscription package. I am a subscriber, so I get everything and it comes in. But this is one that I heard a lot about when it was announced, and I was really excited for it. This is one of the 4Ks that they had, I guess the 4K uh, release that they had for this month. But I'm talking about the film by Matthew Bright uh, from 1996, starring Reese Witherspoon and Kiefer Sutherland. It is Freeway. This movie was awesome. I really, really enjoyed this. I wouldn't give it a 5. I think it's a very strong 4. Maybe 4.5. And, and what I love most about it is that the plot is amazing. The performances blew me away. I really like the writing of it. All of the dialogue that goes out uh, or that is said throughout this film is just absolutely snappy and is so kind of hit you in the face. And I love that about this movie. Uh, Reese Witherspoon plays a delinquent child who, uh, whose mom is a uh, prostitute and her stepfather is a drug abuser and a molester of Reese, Reese, Reese Witherspoon. I'm sorry. And we even get some really sleazy scenes throughout this movie. Some really shocking scenes. I did not think this movie would go that far. And we also have Amanda Plummer in this movie who plays the mom. And she's only in there for a few minutes, maybe. But she is always a joy to watch because she was also in uh, The Fisher King with uh, Robin Williams and, uh, oh my gosh, um, Big Lebowski guy. Um, oh my gosh, I... Jeff Bridges, that's his name. Uh, she's in that film with them, and she is absolutely amazing in that one, and she's just as equally amazing in this one, too, in Freeway. And I didn't watch or at least listen to the new commentary track, so I don't have any uh, thoughts about that. Uh, I didn't really feel the need to because the interviews gave a lot of information. And the first one that I listened to was the interview with the director, Matthew Bright, which is 30 minutes long. So it's about a quarter of the movie. So he said that he was originally in Oingo Boingo. If you don't know who they are, the pretty great uh, 80s pop band. Uh, Danny Elfman is in it too. And there's some really funny stories with uh, Danny Elfman because he also did the score for this movie. And uh, Danny Elfman actually did the score for minimum payment. And I'll get into that more when I talk about the interview with the producer, which is pretty funny. But um, apparently Kiefer Sutherland was the last choice that the director had because the way that you cast movies is that you can only put up one person for a role at a time. And if they decline, you go on to the next person. And apparently Kiefer Sutherland was the final choice of the director. And if he didn't agree to it, the producers were going to take the film away from him and put in a new director, which I thought was shocking because this movie is so well done. And I think only the director could have done it. Um, they talk about how this movie is definitely a vision of the director. It's not really just a movie that was made that anybody could have directed. 
so I was kind of surprised that they would have taken it away, but apparently the character of Reese Witherspoon's character, or of Reese, that Reese Witherspoon uh, directs or acts as, uh, apparently uh, she was based off of the director's wife at the time, which I thought was interesting, is the only word I can say. Um... Apparently, all of the sleaziness in this movie that we see came from real encounters that the director had when he was traveling across America in the 80s and also into the early 90s because he did work in Oingo Boingo and was one of the uh, musicians in the band. So he talked about how he really wanted to uh, be like his favorite director, which is John Waters, of having these very uh, interesting and uh, sort of eccentric characters, and he definitely nailed that. I'm a big John Waters fan, and I didn't really think of John Waters while watching it, and if I did, it might have just been a coincidence. And so to get confirmation that uh, the director definitely was leaning on uh, John Waters' films, for this one just kind of warmed my heart because I love John Waters. Uh, <clears throat> he said when he first met Reese Witherspoon, he said it was basically the same experience that he had uh, seeing Jimi Hendrix play guitar for two seconds and knew that he was the best guitarist. And he said that it was the same thing for Reese Witherspoon where he felt that she was the best actress at the time. So... I definitely agree with him. She's a really great actress, and especially in this movie, it's kind of shocking uh, how good she is. Almost all of the characters in this movie are based off of people that he knew back in fourth and fifth grade, uh, which goes along with the um, a lot of the sleaziness that he saw was based on experiences that he had. So he had a lot of interesting experiences throughout his life. And was able to draw upon that, which I really liked. It's always nice when they put in uh, sort of their own experiences into the movie. And I really like that. But uh, <clears throat> it's funny because by the end of the interview, <clears throat> he is just talking, talking about how great it was. He's like, yeah, it's been a great few years. And the interview is like, oh, it's been about 30. And he's like, what? It's been almost 30 years, really? It's like, what the shit? And then the interview ends, which I thought was a really funny way to end it. Reminded me of uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 interview that they did with um, the guy who played Leatherface. I, his name escapes me right now. Don Johnson or something like that. Um, but that was a really good interview. Uh, if there's any interviews to check out, it would be that one, in my opinion. But... Uh, I also watched the interview with uh, the producer, Brad Wyman, who uh, said that he really liked unconventional movies, and that's what drew him to this project, because he was at uh, Cannes Film Festival, and he said that there were just a stack of scripts sitting in his hotel room, and he wasn't really sure where they came from, so he read through them, and he saw two uh, bright films. Uh, Matthew Bright directed or written films called uh, Kicks and Freeway and Freeway is the one we're talking about and he said he uh, was blown away by it so he bought uh, both of the films and financed them he said that uh, Reese Witherspoon was an incredible performer which I uh, definitely agree with him on uh, apparently there were a lot of issues with the MPAA and that uh they had a lot of issues with using uh, a lot of the dialogue. There's a whole lot of cussing in this movie, and it doesn't really... Uh, you kind of hit over the head with it. <laughs> He's, what's funny, which I alluded to earlier, is that Danny Elfman was the composer for this film. And so... And as I said, Danny Elfman took a very small check for this movie... And the reason why is that he had this producer and Matthew Bright come over for a week and do yard work for him, clearing out uh, brush 
all up and down his uh, Hollywood uh, estate. And he said it was very hard work, but that he said it was worth it at the end because the movie ended up being very good and that the soundtrack especially is very uh, haunting and uh, sort of just has that Danny Elfman magic that a lot of his scores have. And the score, which I haven't really mentioned, is what I loved too. But it was definitely a score that wasn't shouting over every other element of the film, which I like. It was more supporting the film. And he said uh, that Danny Elfman didn't really want to uh, charge his friend who was in Oingo Boingo with him. And so that's kind of the deal that they came up with. And another interview that I watched was with uh, the editor, Maisie Hoy. And she said that the director was super open to critiques after a particular moment, which I'll talk about soon. And that um, her experience with directors is that they're all pretty much quite sensitive when it comes to uh, cutting the film that isn't in the way that they want. And so I thought that was interesting. Uh, she was mostly a comedy editor. She did a lot of uh, comedies before this movie. And she thought this movie was a comedy. And so that's why there's a lot of uh, sort of humorous edits, especially the final shot of the movie, which I haven't really talked about. I'm not going to give spoilers, but personally, I don't really care for the final shot of the movie. Um, when they first started editing the film together, and this is sort of the moment that he became a lot more uh, kind of flexible with her, is that he wanted a very specific cut to happen, and she said it was terrible. And so what she did is that she had a rubber chicken in her office, and she brought it down and was like, here you go, here's the rubber chicken, uh, use its claw to make the cut, because I will not do the cut. So he did it, and he was like, wow, that was a really terrible cut. Um, that was just awful. Like, I should have listened to you. And she was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. You're going to go take a nap, and I will edit the rest of the scenes that we have on hand. And you go nap, and I'll do that. And he woke up, and she presented him with what she had. And it ended up being really, really good. And kept all of the edits. And... She said from there on out, he was very easy to work with. He wasn't questioning every single decision that she made. Uh, he put his full uh, trust into her, which was uh, good of him because not many directors will do that. But um, <clears throat> apparently, uh, as I said earlier, there were issues with the MPAA. They kept giving it a NC-17 or X rating, and... What they uh, were really stuck up on was the use of the word cunt. And it's used three times in this film. And also a lot of uh, sort of racial uh, slurs are also used in this movie, which is not comfortable at all to watch. Um, this movie has a lot of dialogue that makes you uncomfortable, and that's definitely one of them. And... Uh, she said that she had to kind of wrestle with like, okay, if we take out two shits, can we have a fuck? Uh, if we take out um, two dams, can we have uh, use of the word shit? And finally it got to the point where she stopped trying to do that and was just like, here, here's what the movie's about. Here's why we need those cuss words. And finally they relented, but they said that they had to cut together a uh, R-rated cut, which basically took out all of that, and the original cut wasn't really used ever. I think maybe in uh, HBO, when HBO got a hold of it, but uh, not much else. And the last interview that I saw was with Wolfgang Bodison, who is uh, one of the detectives, and he said he was working on the Highlander TV show when he finally got the offering for the role. Um, he got a call, and he said that it was probably one of the best acting gigs he had, because he's in a bunch of other movies that are more well-known, but 
never is known for this one, so he's always kind of thrown off when people come up and say, like, hey, you were in my favorite movie, and he's thinking a different movie, and they say Freeway, and he's like, I know everything I need to know about you, is exactly what he said, but um, that interview wasn't that long, I think it was like seven to ten minutes, and it was mostly just about working with Reese Witherspoon, who, uh, her character becomes, or goes to jail, basically, and he's having to interview her with his, uh, cop, uh, partner, and so they go back and forth, uh, talking about, uh, how she needs to be open about the serial killer, and all of that, and to help him, or help them lock up, uh, the killer, but she wants to take matters into her own hands, because he has survived her, uh, shooting. She shot him, like, five times, and that's where the, uh, really fucked up face, uh, comes into play. That's the, uh, serial killer, but, uh, yeah, really great package. The interviews were just okay. Uh, would I have bought this, uh, without the subscription? Eventually, if I'd heard the hype, but... I don't think I would have bought this, like, <coughs> I don't think I would have bought this, uh, upon announcement, for example. So, yeah. I can't really do much else. I feel like I'm dying now. <laughs> Try not to cough, but, uh, thank you all so much for watching, and please have a great rest of the day.